In this section, we'll learn about an instrumentation amplifier. It's a difference amplifier with a very, very high input impedance that therefore is useful for sensing differential voltages in instruments. It's also a good circuit to practice the analysis of more complicated op-amp circuits and to become more familiar with the concepts of comm mode rejection ratio. Here's a simple difference amplifier circuit. It's easy to show that as long as we take the ratio of R4 over R3 equal to R2 over R1, we obtain a differential gain of R2 over R1 with infinite comm mode rejection. We can also easily see that the input resistance of this simple differential amplifier is finite. Applying the differential input source VID, we can find the input current in these two branches, which must be the same, and we define as being equal to II, using an ideal op amp assumption. Assuming that ideal op amp and that the feedback configuration is stable, we can assume a virtual short circuit between the two input terminals of the op amp which means that they'll be at the same voltage. Therefore, the voltage drop across each of the resistors, R1, is II times R1. And putting the voltage drop of those across those two resistors together must give us the differential input VID. We can rearrange this expression to find the ratio of VID over II is it's simply two times R1, which by definition is the input differential resistance. Instrumentation amplifiers are often called upon to amplify weak voltage signals from sources with relatively high source resistance. So we'd like the instrumentation amplifier to have a very high input resistance, similar to that of the non-inverting configuration. And we can do that simply by introducing non-inverting buffers ahead of our difference amplifier. That's what's shown here. On the right is our basic differential amplifier. And you'll see that the resistors in both branches of this difference amplifier are chosen to have the same values, R3 and R4. So this stage we know has a differential gain of R4 over R3 with infinite column mode rejection. And let's call its inputs V1 and V2. V1 and V2 in turn are produced by these non-inverting stages. which have high, ideally infinite input resistance and buffer and potentially amplify the inputs VI1 on the top and VI2 on the bottom. Now the gain of these two non-inverting stages is made the same by choosing the resistor values R1 and R2 the same in both cases. So overall, the amplifier output, this instrumentation amplifier output, is equal to AD, the differential gain of the difference amp stage, times the difference V2 minus V1. We can substitute in what we know about V2 and V1. That is that they're each equal to the input VI2 and VI1 respectively times the non-inverting amplifier stage gain 1 plus R2 over R1. So if we just substitute in 
for AD, we can find that overall this stage has a differential gain 1 plus R2 over R1 from the first stage times R4 over R3 times the second stage. So just to clarify, let's note that this differential gain R4 over R3 applies only to the second stage. Whereas this is the overall differential gain of this difference amplifier. You'll also notice that the output voltage here depends only on the differential input. And that is, there's no common mode gain and infinite common mode rejection. The amplifier also, since the inputs are connected directly to the inputs of non-inverting configurations, have high input resistance, ideally infinite. So this looks like it meets all the criteria that we established for an instrumentation amplifier. But there is a small subtle problem. And that is, you'll note that if the input had a large common mode component, that is, if both the inputs, VI1 and VI2, were moving up and down together, with a common mode source, what we would find is that although the output wouldn't change, these intermediate node voltages, VI1 and VI2, would be moving around with the input common mode. Moreover, they might move up and down with a large gain, depending on the values of R2 over R1. So in a sense, all the common mode rejection is coming from the last stage, whereas the first stage is potentially amplifying the common mode component. There's a couple of problems with this. One is that if there's any small mismatch between the values of R3 and R4 in the second stage, then the amplified common mode signal at V1 and V2 can leak through to the output. The second problem is, even if there's no mismatch at all in the resistors, even though the second stage would then provide perfect common mode rejection, if the common mode input is large enough, it may saturate the outputs of op amps A1 and A2 before the signal even reaches the second stage. At that point, the signal would be irreversibly corrupted. These shortcomings are addressed by making only a very small change to the instrumentation amplifier shown on the last slide. Specifically, the ground connection that used to appear here has been removed so that we've now simply got a single resistor with a value of two times R1 instead of the two resistors with a value R1 both connected to ground. This small change has profound implications for the operation of the circuit. Specifically, let's see what happens if the two inputs are both connected to a common mode input voltage, VICM. Assuming ideal op amps, A1 and A2 both have a virtual short circuit assumption so that the node voltages here are also VICM. As a result, there's zero volts across this resistor 2R1. Hence, there's zero current flowing through it. Since there's no current flowing into the ideal op amps, that means there's no current flowing through the resistors R2 either. If there's no current flowing through them, they've got no voltage drop across them, which means that the voltages here, V1 and V2, are both also equal to VICM. This is in sharp contrast to the previous instrumentation amplifier, where the input comma mode signal was actually amplified by the gain 1 plus R2 over R1.
So this means that input common mode signals are no longer amplified by the first stage of this amplifier. So there's much less risk of those op amps saturating in response to large common mode input signals. And also there's less to worry about common mode gain leaking through the difference amplifier in the second stage. Again, the difference is that the ground connection here was removed. That ground connection on the previous schematic allowed some current to flow through the resistors R1 and out to ground. Since there's no ground connection here, there's nowhere for that current to flow. So the current through the resistor 2R1 is zero in response to a common mode input. And that makes all the difference. Let's proceed with a detailed analysis of this improved instrumentation amplifier with respect to a differential input BID. Since the two inputs to the instrumentation amplifier are both connected directly to the input terminals of ideal op amps, we've still got our infinite differential input resistance, which is a desirable property for our instrumentation amplifier. We've also got thanks to our virtual short circuit assumption, the voltage VID appearing across the resistor to R1 here. That gives rise to the current shown here, VID over to R1 through that resistor. Assuming ideal op amps, we've got zero current into these terminals. So nodal equations here and here would reveal that the current VID over 2R1 flows through the resistors R2 as well. Therefore, the voltage difference here, that is VO2 minus VO1, is equal to the sum of the voltage drop across R2, R2 times the current flowing through it, plus the voltage drop across 2R1, which we know is VID, plus the voltage drop across the other resistor, R2, which again is R2 VID over 2R1. So if we put that all together, we find that the input differential voltage is amplified by the gain of the non-inverting stages, one plus R2 over R1 at the intermediate nodes, VO1 and VO2. That signal is then applied to our simple difference amplifier here, which we know has a gain of R4 over R3 with the resistor values as shown. So that's our differential gain of our second stage. So overall, this stage has a differential gain given by the product of the gain of the first stage. That's the gain of the non-inverting configuration, one plus R2 over R1 times the differential gain of the difference amp in the second stage, R4 over R3. This improved invert, uh, instrumentation amplifier has our infinite input resistance, and it can have large differential gain. It shouldn't have any common mode gain at all. But even if there is some small mismatch in the resistor values, the common mode gain should be modest because we're not amplifying the common mode signal in the first stage. Even the first stage is actually providing us some significant common mode rejection, assuming we've got some gain, one plus R2 over R1.